Hi guys, I'm back with another video and today we're going to be making this adorable little sea otter. So let's get straight into it. So to make the otter we're going to be using the following things. We have some core wool and some merino wool. In the merino wool I have a medium brown and a natural white colour and these are the two main colours. Then I have a shade that's in between the white and the brown and this is just to add some detail in, add a bit of shading. Then I have some black and some dark brown. Again, these are for the detailing. We have felting needles. We have a 38, a 40 and a 42 gauge. We also have a reverse felting needle, a pair of scissors and a felting mat. We're going to start out with the core wall. And this one is from Simply Felting. It's nice and bouncy and it felts really well. So I'm just going to grip one end with my thumb and finger and I'm going to very gently pull this off. Then this chunk is going to create the head. Now I'm going to grip it again but this time instead of just my thumb and finger I'm going to use the whole of my hand to grip it and again gently pull it off. And this section is going to make the base for the body. So the piece I'm going to be using for the body, I'm just going to pop that to one side for now and we're going to focus on the head. So about one third of the way down, I'm just going to grip the wall at a slight diagonal angle. Then I'm going to flip it over and pull my finger out so it creates this straight edge. And I'm just going to felt that a couple of times, just so enough so that it holds together. I'm going to fold it over again and felt again so that it creates this triangular shape. Again, only felt in a few times just so that it holds together. Now we're going to very carefully lift the triangle from the mat and we're going to fold it over like so. Then this end, the thicker end, is going to stay nice and loose but then this fold is going to create the back of the head and the pointed end is going to create the nose. So again, we're just going to fold that over like so. I'm going to take the 38 gauge needle and just really felt that down. Now that it's been felted a couple of times, it should start to hold the shape. So now, again, this is going to create the back of the head and the pointed end is going to create the nose. So we're now going to focus on the nose end and we're going to really start compressing it down until it's nice and tight. So again, using the 38 gauge needle, I'm going to begin working from the nose end and felting towards the back of the head. Just really compressing the wall down. I'm going to turn it around and keep working at it from all angles. Just keep rotating it and keep felting. As you can see, this has compressed quite a lot. So now I'm going to start working at the back of the head, again with the 38 gauge needle, and I'm going to bring this in towards the nose. Just using very small and steady pokes and again, just keep rotating and felting. You want to really compress this wall so that it's nice and tight and then it will give a nice firm structure and a great base to work from. Now I feel that I have a bit too much excess here so all I'm going to do is just pull some of this off like so and I'm going to continue felting until I'm happy with the size and the shape. So 
So once you've felted your head to a point that you're happy with, you can pop that to one side and we're going to start making the basic shape for the body. So I'm going to take the core wool from earlier and I'm going to begin rolling all the way down like so. Then I'm going to use the 38 gauge needle and felt it just a few times so again it just holds its shape. Then I'm going to take one end of this and I'm going to very carefully pull it just, just very slightly so that it's nice and loose. Then the other end is going to be the bottom so we're going to use the 38 gauge needle and bring all the edges in and felt them towards the centre. We're going to make this nice and round like so. So again this end stays nice and loose and this end is rounded. So I'm going to continue using the needle and continue shaping the body. Just like we did with the head, keep rotating it and keep felting until you're happy with it. You can check the proportions of the body by comparing it to the head. So we want the body to be twice as long as the head. So you can just measure up the head to make sure you've got the right size. Then once you're happy with that, put the body to one side. So we're going to continue working on the head and now I'm going to take another piece of core wool but this time only a very very small thin piece and I'm just going to fold this in half and felt it down very lightly. Then I'm going to place this over towards the back of the head. So I'm going to pop it over the back and fold it down each side and felt that on. Then I'm going to felt it in the middle at the top but I'm going to leave these sides nice and loose. So at the top in the middle Then I'm going to felt all around the back of the head. And so once that's felted you should have something that looks similar to this. Now this loose bit here is where the eyes are going to go so the wall kind of makes a pocket for the eye to sit. Then when, once the eye is placed in, that is when we're going to start felting down and making sure it's nice and secure. So for the eyes, I'm going to use some brown merino. I'm just going to take a very small piece and I'm going to roll it into a ball. Then I'm going to place this into one of the pockets of wool. And I'm going to felt it down with the 38 gauge needle. And now, this is where we can start felting down the side of the wall. Just felt it down around the eye. And don't worry about the eye looking very big because most of this will get covered up. Um, so we're just going to repeat this again for the other eye. Both the eyes are now felted in place and you should have something that looks similar to this. It does look very strange at the moment but we're going to continue working on the face and building up some shape. So next we're going to be working on the cheeks and for this we're going to use the white coloured merino. So I'm going to take a small piece of the wool. The trick here is to use less wool than you think you might need because it's much easier to add some more wool on if needed whereas if you add too much to start off with it can be difficult to get the shape that you're going for. 
So I'm quite happy with this piece here. So now I'm just going to roll the wall like so. Then I'm going to felt it a couple of times so that it holds its shape. So this piece of wall is going to get placed underneath the eye and this is going to create the cheek. So we're going to place one end at the back of the nose and it's going to fold around towards the back of the head. So carefully lift it from the mat and place one end towards the back of the nose. I'm just going to felt that down. Then I'm going to curve the other end round towards the back of the head, again underneath the eye. I'm also going to felt down at the bottom so underneath the chin and for the top I'm going to fold up around the back of the eye but the bit that's covering the eye here I want to keep that nice and loose so that we can shape it later on so felt in the back of the cheek around the back of the eye and I'm going to felt up towards the eye, but again, this top part keep nice and loose. And I'm going to repeat this for the other side. Next we're going to be adding some wool to the top of the head. So again with the white merino I'm just going to pull off a small piece like so and I'm just going to fluff up the fibres and then I'm going to place this onto the mat. I'm going to felt a line with the 38 gauge needle just going straight down the centre like so. And now I'm going to felt in a diagonal angle to create a triangle. So the top here is going to be the point and I'm going to felt diagonally to the outer corner and again on the other side. And the edges I'm going to fold over and felt them on as well. We're going to carefully lift the triangle from the mat and then the pointed end is going to get placed over towards the nose like so and each side is going to curve around the side of the head. So I'm going to felt the pointed end down first and again each side is going to get curved around to the side of the head and felted down as well. I'm going to continue felting about around the back of the head and at the top of the head, again leaving the section near the eyes nice and loose. And once that's all felted down we can start shaping the eyes. So I'm just going to take the 38 gauge needle and I'm just going to very carefully lift up the wool around the eye just so that we expose it. And now I'm going to start shaping the eye by felting the wool around the edge. At this point it doesn't need to be perfect because we will, we will be creating eyelids a bit later on. But for now we just want to get a general shape of how we want the eye to look. So just felting around and then when you're happy with the shape you can continue to felt all the way down. And do this on both sides.
Again, these don't have to be perfect, but once you're happy with the shape, we're going to add some black to the eyes to create the pupil. So I'm just going to take a very tiny amount of the black merino. I'm just going to roll it into a tiny ball and just felt that into each eye. And same again for the other side. And now you should have something that looks like this. So we're going to leave the eyes as they are for now, but later on we will be adding a bit more detail. But for now we're going to make a start on the nose. To work on the nose we're going to be using the white merino again. So I'm just going to take off a small piece, again using less than you think you might need. And I'm just going to fluff this up and I'm going to felt it on the mat into a circular shape. You don't have to felt it loads, just felt it enough so that it holds together, like so. Then we're going to very carefully lift this up and we're going to place it over one half of the nose. Then we're going to felt it straight in the middle so that it stays on. Then we're going to curve it around towards the front of the eye and felt that down as well. And now we're just going to continue felting and keeping it nice and rounded and then we're going to repeat the same again for the other side. So both sides have been added to the nose and next we're going to be making a bottom jaw. So for this, again, we're going to be using the white merino, taking a small amount and fluffing it up again. But this time I'm going to felt straight down the centre and just form a little triangle by felting diagonally across each side, folding the edges over. Felt in again and once we have this little shape I'm going to very carefully lift it from the mat and we're going to place the pointed end towards the front of the nose and the triangular the wider end is going to come towards the back so focusing mainly on the point we're going to felt that in right in the centre line of where the two sides of the nose meet just like so then we're going to felt around the sides bringing up and creating a very like a very small smile I'm not sure if you can see this on camera but then we're going to continue felting until it's all nice and secure and again on the other side felt it in the centre and bring the sides round into a small smile and then continue felting the rest. At this point I'm still using the 38 gauge needle but as the wool starts to compress you can switch to a smaller needle if you feel like it's necessary. I'm just going to go back in and really define the smile line. We will be adding some darker wool to define this a lot more later on but for now I just want to really figure out where I want it to be. 
and just make it nice and clear, ready for adding the darker wool. So here's what it's looking like with the bottom jaw felted on as well. You can very faintly see the smile line that I've created on either side. So now we're going to be going back to the eyes, we're going to create some eyelids to really help the eyes pop, make them really stand out. Then we're going to be adding some colour to the nose before we add on the actual nose. The eyelids are nice and easy, we're just going to be using again the white merino wool. Just going to pull off a really really small piece and I'm just going to roll this up into a little sausage. Just a really small one that's just just slightly bigger than the eye. So one end I'm going to place towards the front of the eye and I'm just going to felt that down. I'm going to use the 40 gauge needle and I'm going to curve it around towards the back of the eye and felt that down as well. And now I'm just going to continue following that line and felting the eyelid on. I'm going to felt on the bottom of the eyelid too. So I'm going to felt that up and really tighten it all up. The bottom eyelid is made in the same way, just using a very, very tiny piece of wool to make a sausage that's a bit smaller than the first one. We're going to place this along the bottom of the eye, again starting towards the front of the eye. We're going to felt that on and bringing it around towards the back of the eye. And just like before, we're going to follow the line and felt it down. Just adding that small bit of detail really helps the eyes to pop. So here's one with the eyelid and one without. You can really see the difference and it just makes it look a lot better. So now we're going to do the same again for the other eye. I've also added a tiny dot of white wool into both of the eyes just to give it a little highlight and the eyes are already looking so much better. So now we're going to be adding a second colour to the face just to give it more of a different tone, give it some more shading. So we're going to be using the colour that's in between the brown and the white. This is the colour that I'm going to be using. I'd say it's a light tan sandy sort of colour. But as you can tell, it's a lot lighter than the brown that we're going to be using. But it's also darker than the white that we've been working with. So now you have two choices. You can either just apply this directly to your sculpture, wherever you want it to be. Or if you don't mind putting in a bit of extra time, then you can do this method. I'm just going to take a small amount and felt it onto the mat first. And very carefully lift this up and now we have a small sheet of wool. So what we can do now is very very gently pull away the edges and this is just going to help give a smoother blend when you attach it to your sculpture. So I'm going to flip it over so the fuzzy side is facing up and I'm just going to figure out where I want to place this. And because we're just adding a bit of colour, a bit of dimension to it, I want to focus it around the nose area. So basically, the, I want the darker colour to be coming forward towards the back of the head, rather than starting at the back. So I want to focus it all around the centre of the face. So I'm just going to place that over the top of the nose. And I'm going to use the 40 gauge needle and begin felting this on.
If you find that it's quite difficult for you to felt on another colour, then you can switch to the smaller needle. And this is the 42 gauge. And it's just going to felt on a, a little bit easier than using the bigger needles. So I'm going to continue felting this and I'm going to add a bit more of the darker shade just in areas that I want to touch up and make a bit darker. But yeah, I'm going to continue doing this and I will show you where I've placed the wall when it's finished. And when you've added as much of the dark colour as you want to, then we can move on and we're going to start making the nose. So I'm going to be using the brown wool. I'm just going to pull off a really small piece and I'm just going to very carefully roll that up. I'm not rolling it into any shape, I'm just rolling it just purely to compress it a bit. I'm going to place that over and where the mouth is, the point for the mouth, we're going to have the nose so that it points down. It's a very strange shape so it may help for you to get some pictures up before you do this but I will try my best to explain as I go. So I'm going to felt it down first where the mouth is. I'm going to felt it up so that it's a nice point and I'm going to bring it out either side so that it's a, it starts to form a triangular shape at the bottom like so. Then the top of the nose is going to come up and it's going to be rounded off at the very top. So we want it to be triangular at the bottom and then elongated and rounded off at the top. And once you're happy with the shape, we can add a little bit more detail by taking some of the dark brown wool. I'm just going to take a very, very tiny piece and I'm just going to add it over the pointed end at the bottom, just creating a little triangle just to help define it a bit more. Again, just at the bottom at the triangular end, leaving the top end as it is. And you can take your 40 gauge, uh, sorry, your 38 gauge needle and just poke in two holes for little nostrils. Like so. And now we're going to take some more of the brown wool, not the dark brown, just the, the standard brown wool. And I'm going to take a very, very tiny piece and I'm going to add it just above on the bottom jaw. So just coming down as if it's coming from the bottom lip. I'm just going to felt that on just to add a bit more detail. So now I'm just taking the 38 gauge needle and again I'm just going over to define that smile line. If you want to you can use some dark brown wool and just take a very tiny strip and roll it up and then you can add this onto the mouth as well if you really want it to stand out but I quite like it just the way it is. So now we're going to make some tiny ears. So again, using the medium brown wool, I'm just going to take a very small amount. And again, this is only a very small amount because they do have tiny ears. So I'm just going to fluff up the fibres and I'm going to felt them on the mat. And I'm just going to use the needle to mark out a shape for the ear. Then the edges around that shape are going to get folded over and felted in.
I'm going to very carefully lift this from the mat. I'm going to flip it over and felt it again, making sure all the fibres are nice and compressed and nice and tight. Again, I'm going to very carefully lift it from the mat. And then the outer edge, which is the rounded side, I'm going to hold that nice and tight. Then I'm going to pull some of the fibres away from the bottom, just like so. And then this is going to get felted onto the head and I'm going to place it behind the eye and just move it back a little bit, like so. And I'm going to felt it by starting in the middle and move it out towards the edges. Just make sure that's really well felted on and then repeat the same again for the other ear. Both ears are now attached and looking adorable. So now we're going to be adding the head to the body. So just take in the body you made before with the core wall and we're going to line it up so that the head is at the front and the body is at the back and where the two loose ends are we want them to meet up like so then we're just going to felt it down around the neck and just keep felting until it's nice and secure just like so. And now we're going to position the head into the position that we want it to be in. So I'm going to have my otter laying on his back and I just want to bring the head forward just like so. So now I'm just going to very carefully hold the head in place and I'm going to continue felting around to tighten this up and then this should help the head stay exactly where you want it to be. Then we can also flip it over and the wall that's overhanging at the back, we're going to fold that up and felt that in towards the back of the head. And again, I'm just going to continue felting this until it's nice and secure. The head is now nice and securely attached to the body, so we can start working on the limbs. I'm going to start working on the arms first. I'm going to take some core wall, I'm just going to pull off a really small chunk, just nice and thin, a nice small piece. Then I'm going to start folding it over and I'm going to fold it in a diagonal angle. So I'm just going to place my finger and fold the wool over and remove the finger and I'm going to fold again in the same direction so that it creates a pointed end here. I'm going to start felting down the pointed end and then the wider end I'm going to leave nice and loose. Felt it a few times and then carefully lift it up from the mat and turn it on its side and felt again. I'm just going to continue felting and rotating until it becomes nice and thin and really starts to hold its shape really well. Again, just leaving the thicker end nice and loose. When it starts taking shape, you can pick it up and measure it against the head. I like the length of the arm to be the same length as the head. And it doesn't matter about this excess bit because again, this is going to stay nice and loose so that it gets felt felted onto the body. But the actual arm, make sure it's around the same length as the head. Then again, continue felting until it's nice and tight.
you want to try and keep the arm as nice and thin as possible, thinner than you'd like the finished arm to be, because we are going to be adding a second coat of wool on top, just to add the colour. But if you're worried that you're not going to be able to keep the arm nice and thin, then you can skip the core wool and just use the same method using your coloured wool. I'm just going to repeat this again to make a second arm in the same way. And there we have two tiny arms. So now we're going to be adding the colour. Uh, you can colour yours however you like. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to do brown on the outer side and I'm going to do the inside of the arms the same colour as what I've done the head. But again you can colour yours however you like. It is a lot easier if you do them all one colour. But to get started I'm going to take the brown merino wool and I'm just going to fluff up the fibres by stacking them on each other and just gently pulling them apart like so. Then I'm going to take a very small amount of these, just enough to cover the arm. And then I'm going to place them on the mat and gently felt down. I'm only felting a few times, I don't want to over felt at this point. Just enough so that I can lift it from the mat as one sheet. I'm going to take just a little bit more from the edges so I'm going to grip it really tight and just rip off a little bit more of the fibre. There we go. So now I'm going to place this over the arm and just felt it down. I'm going to use the 40 gauge needle and just make sure it's nice and well felted on. going to flip it over and bring around the sides and felt it down to help prevent the wool coming through on the other side all I'm going to do is do very very light felts I don't need to push the needle in very deep just do it nice and gentle and you can angle the needle slightly too so that instead of the needle going straight through it's going towards the bottom of the arm so that as you're felting down, the wool shouldn't show through on the other side. So I'm just going to continue doing this until the brown is really well felted on. And here's how it looks with the layer of brown. And when we compare this to the other arm that hasn't had the colour on yet, you can see it really does make it a lot thicker. So now we're going to do the other side and this is where I'm going to be adding the lighter colours. So I'm going to take some of the light colour. This is the slightly off-white colour, the creamy colour. And again, just like before, I'm going to fluff up some of the fibres. and I'm just going to place these on the mat. As you can see, these don't cover the whole arm, but what I'm going to do is I'm also going to take some of the medium color that we use to shade the face, and I'm also going to add a little bit of this towards the top of the light color, just like so. And just like before, I'm going to felt this down And lift it from the mat, grip it tightly, pull off a little from the edge and then I'm going to place this over and felt it on this side of the arm. Now 
now it's nice and secure in the middle I'm just going to pull off a bit more of the edges just because I don't want it going all the way around the paw so I'm just going to pull that off and then I'm going to felt this down There we go, both sides are now covered, so now I'm going to work on making the little paw pad. I've just zoomed right in so hopefully you'll be able to see a little bit better. But I'm using the dark brown wool now, I'm just going to take off a really small piece. Again, use less than you think you might need, you can always add more if you need it later. I'm just going to roll it up into a little ball shape then I'm going to place this straight on the paw and I'm going to begin shaping by felting it around the edges I'm just using the 40 gauge needle but if you're finding it a bit difficult to felt with this one you can switch to the smaller needle which is the 42 gauge and just continue felting and when you're happy with the shape then you can felt it down really well I'm just using very very light pokes again so that it doesn't come through on the other side and now with the main paw pad felted on we're going to add the little toes well the little toe pads so I'm just going to take a very very tiny piece, roll it into a ball and felt that on. And I'm just going to repeat this until I have five toe pads. And there we have a very tiny and adorable otter paw. So I'm just going to repeat the exact same steps for the other arm. So once both paws are completed, we can then start to position them on the body. So I'm just going to take the body and lay both of the paws out and just see where I want them to sit. Then once you're happy with the positioning, we're going to tack them down. We're not going to felt them fully just yet, but we are going to felt them just a couple of times, just enough so that they stay where they are. So I'm using the 38 gauge needle and just felt in a few times. Again, this does not need to be perfect because it's just purely to hold it in place temporarily. So I'm going to fold it over and do the other side. And as you can see, they're nice on the body, but they're not fully secure, but they're felted enough just so that they hold on. So with the arms nice and loosely tacked in place, we're going to start working on the back legs. So again, I'm just going to take some core wool, take a nice small chunk, just like so. Then I'm going to grip one end of the core wall in a diagonal angle. And just like before, I'm going to fold it over, remove my finger and fold it over again to form a triangle. So I'm just using the 38 gauge needle again to start felting it down. Flip it on its side and felt again. And again, just keep flipping and felting. Now for the back legs, they don't need to be as skinny as the arms. 
So I do want to keep a nice triangular shape. So I'm going to keep belting this and then keep checking it by placing it over your body like so. Just check that you're happy with the size and the shape. And then once you are, just keep felting until it's nice and almost firm. Again, just like we did with the arms, I'm going to leave the wider side nice and loose because this is what's going to get attached to the body. You can always add some more core wool if you feel that you need to, but we will be adding a brown layer on top. I'm just going to measure it up with the body and don't worry about the loose end you can just sort of tuck that in because again that's going to get felted down anyway and then once you're happy with the size and the shape we're just going to repeat the exact same process for the second back leg we've now got two legs I've just placed them over to line them up with the body, make sure I'm happy with the size and positioning. We want the bottom of the leg to come just about half a centimetre below the body. Now what we're going to do next is we're going to add a brown layer of wool all the way around each leg. So I'm just going to take one of the legs and just put it to one side. And I'm going to create a sheet of wool with the brown. Just like before, I'm going to fluff it up and then felt it onto the mat. And just make sure it's big enough so that it's going to cover the leg. And now I'm going to very carefully lift this from the mat and I'm going to place it over the leg and begin felting. Just like when we did the arms, we're going to use very tiny light pokes so that the wool doesn't show through on the other side. Flip it over and we're going to continue felting until the entire leg is covered and it's nice and firm. So here's what the leg looks like with the brown layer on top and here's a comparison with the other one. As you can see once I've added the brown layer I felted it really well and it's nice and compressed and nice and firm and now this is ready to start attaching to the body. So I'm going to put this to one side and I'm going to repeat the same again to add a brown layer to the other back leg. So we've now got two brown legs. Before attaching these to the body, I like to create the feet first, put the little flippers on the feet and then attach them to the body. So I'm just going to put those to one side. And to make the feet, we're going to be aiming for this sort of shape. It's a little bit difficult to describe, but I will be showing you how to do it anyway. So this is just a rough idea of what we're aiming for. And I'm going to take some more of the brown wool. So I'm just going to pull off a very small piece and fluff up the fibres. Then I'm going to place these onto the mat and what we're going to do now is we're going to mark out the shape that we're going to be aiming for using the needle. So this is the sort of shape that we're going to be aiming for. So I'm just going to take the needle and I'm going to mark out across the top. This is the 40 gauge needle, no sorry, it's the 38 gauge needle. I'm just going to mark out across the top. 
then I'm going to bring it down at a slight diagonal angle and again for the same on the other side then I'm going to pull it across just like so so we're creating a sort of parallelogram shape I'm going to fold over the edges and felt them down as well and fold up the bottom and this, this excess wool here we're going to keep nice and loose because this is what we're going to be using to attach to the leg. So I'm just going to continue felting and really define that shape. I'm just going to very carefully lift this from the mat. I'm going to flip it over and continue felting. Flip it again. I'm just going to continue flipping and felting until I And when you're happy with the rough shape, then we can start adding some detail. So first of all, I'm going to create some lines down the flipper to create some sort of individual toes. I'm not sure if that's what they're called, but we're going to use a 38 gauge needle and we're going to create four lines. So I'm going to mark out the first one. And I'm just going to do it straight down. And then to help it stand out even more, I'm going to take some dark brown wool. I'm going to pull off a very, very thin strand. And this is just a couple of strands thick, so a really thin piece. And I'm going to twist it together so that it looks a bit like thread. Then I'm just going to felt this in over the line. Just like so. Then I'm going to continue again until I've created four lines. So this will be the second. Taking some more dark brown. The third line. And with those lines I did, it just gives a little bit more detail. So you can either stop here and move on to the next foot, or if you want to add even more detail, you can take some more of the dark brown wool, just a very, very tiny piece, and roll it into a ball. Then just add a very small dot into each of the sections. And here is the flipper with all the detailing finished. So now we can move on to making the second one. So we're going to use the exact same steps, but this time before adding the details, we're going to flip the shape over so it's facing the opposite way. Then we're going to add the details on top so that we have two flippers both facing the opposite way. So there we've got two flippers, both the same shape. This is the detailed one and this is the one that has no detail yet. So I'm just going to flip that over and then add the detailing on this side. So both flippers have now had their detailing finished. 
so we can start attaching them to the legs. I'm just going to take one flipper and one of the legs and I'm just going to place it over the very end of the leg like so and we want the pointed end of the flipper to be facing out. So just position that to where you're happy and then the fluffy fibres at the end of the flipper are going to get spread out and felted onto the leg. And flip it over and felt down the other side. And what I also like to do is I like to felt just in the centre a little bit so that the flipper starts to curve around. I'll just show you now. I'm using again the 38 gauge needle and I'm just going to felt it down the centre and just allow the flipper to curve around. Like so. So I'm just going to continue felting this until it's really secure on the leg. So I've attached the flippers to both legs and here's what they look like. These are now ready for attaching to the body. So I'm just going to put these to one side for now while we work on the tail. So for the tail it's nice and simple, we're just going to be using a very small piece of core wool. This looks thicker than what it is, it's actually a really thin piece. Then I'm going to start by folding it over in a diagonal angle and I'm just going to continue folding until we form a long thin triangular shape. So I'm going to felt this down. and flip it over and keep felting I'm just checking it with the body to see that if I'm happy with the length and yep yeah, I'm quite happy with that so now what I'm going to do is take some of the brown wool and I'm just going to make another little sheet and then I'm just going to cover the entire tail apart from this end again keeping this end nice and loose but cover the rest of it in the brown wool and just like we did with the arms and the legs use very small steady pokes you don't want to go in too deep just felt it very lightly and keep rotating and felting So when you finish felting the tail you should have something that looks like this. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to place the limbs against the body of the otter just to make sure I'm happy with the way things line up and as you can see here the leg looks absolutely huge compared to the otter but bear in mind this bit here is still nice and loose and most of this is actually going to get curved around the body and become part of the body. So I'm just going to check that I'm happy with everything. So I'm quite happy with the way this is looking. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to remove all of the limbs apart from the head. And we're just going to be working on the body right now. Before I secure the arms, I like to add a bit of colour to the neck and chest area first. It just makes it a lot easier than having to work around the arms. So I'm just going to be using the same colour that I used for the head and for the inner part of the arms. 
I'm just going to pull a small piece off and fluff it up. Then I'm going to felt this into a little sheet. So just a few felts on the mat. Then I'm also going to use just a little bit of the darker shade which we used for the detailing on the face. And I'm just going to place this towards the bottom. And again, a few felts just to help create that sheet. And I'm just going to very carefully lift this from the mat. So I'm going to tilt the head back very slightly and I'm just going to place the wool over just underneath the chin and over the chest area. Then I'm going to begin felting this down. It doesn't have to be particularly neat but it does need to be really well felted. So I'm just going to continue felting this until it's well felted on and then we'll move on to the next stage. I'm also going to add a little bit of brown to the bottom of the body so I'm just going to use the same technique and make a brown sheet from the mat and I'm going to place this over the bottom of the body and just felt that down So at the end there I just decided I wanted to add a little bit more brown so I just used the exact same method and just added a little sheet just to bring the brown a little bit further up the body. So now we can start adding the limbs and I'm going to start by adding the arms first. So I'm just going to take one of the arms and position it back on the body. Just figure out a place where I'm happy and I like the way that it sits. And then I'm going to turn him over and just felt this on really well. Then I'm going to do the same with the second arm. Just place it over the body position it and then felt that on really well as well. You really want to felt it and make sure it's nice and secure. Next we're going to be adding the legs and we want it so that the flippers are pointing away from the body. So I'm going to take one of the legs I'm just going to pull off a very little piece from the end and again make sure it's pointing away from the body like so. Then I'm just going to position it on and start felting. So I felt down the leg just to keep it in place and then I like to flip it over and bring the excess of the leg and curve it round and felt that down as well. 
Again, just make sure this is really well felted and that it's nice and secure. And same again for the other leg. We're just going to position this on the body and start felting it down. Curve it around and felt underneath. So he's really starting to take shape now. So next we're going to be adding the tail. So I'm just going to position the tail in between the legs and just check that I'm happy with the positioning. And again, just begin felting this down, making sure it's nice and secure. Now that all the limbs are attached, you'll notice that there are still some areas where the core wool is showing through. So what we're going to do now is use the brown wool to create more sheets and we're just going to cover all these areas that are exposed. So I'm going to do one all the way up the back and up towards the back of the head. Then I also like to add another sheet of wool over the, over the belly and over the legs just to help blend it all together. So again, I'm just taking some of the brown wool, fluffing up the fibres and creating a sheet. Lift it from the mat and then I'm going to start patching over all the exposed areas. All of the exposed core wool has now been covered and we're ready to start making the fur. Again before we do this you do want to make sure that this is really well felted and it's really secure on the body and that all the brown wool is not too loose. So once you've achieved that then we can move on to the fur. So to create the fur I am going to be using a reverse needle but you can also use a pet brush if you have one. And all you're going to do is very gently start brushing all the brown of the otter. And again, this is why you need to make sure that it's really well felted because if the fibres are too loose, it's just going to pull it off. So as long as it's well felted, you should be able to very gently brush out the wool and it'll give the appearance of fur. But because I'm going to be using the reverse needle, I'll just show you how to do that. So I'm going to take the needle and I'm going to hold it parallel, so straight across from the body. I'm not going to poke the needle into the sculpture, I'm just going to hold it across 
place it on top of it and very lightly brush the fibres. Now you can actually insert the needle if you need to or if you wish to just like so but don't push it in too far because you will pull the core, the core wool and it will show through on the outside hence why I just tend to very lightly brush it across the top but I'm going to continue doing this all the way up the body until we reach the head It's now looking very very fluffy but don't worry this will get trimmed later on. So now that I've done the whole back side and the sides I'm going to do the belly next. So again I'm just going to use the exact same method and work from the bottom all the way up to underneath the chin. looking very fluffy again so now we're going to be working on the head and for the head we do want this to be a little bit thicker so what I tend to do is I work at the back of the head and I do actually insert the needle but only to the very first barb I'm not sure if you can see on camera but for my case the first barb is just right here so basically I'm only inserting the very tip of the needle and I'm going to pull it through And I'm going to keep felting, going over the same line a couple of times, just so I can really help build up the density of the fibre. Keep going so that it's nice and thick. And then I'm slowly going to work my way towards the nose. And I'm going to stop just here where the smile line ends. And I'm going to repeat the same again on the other side. So he's now got some really fluffy cheeks and I'm just going to be using the same technique all the way around the back of the head, on top of the head and down towards the nose. And again I'm going to stop right around where the smile line is. So here. So now that all his head has been fluffed, he looks absolutely crazy at the minute, but we are going to trim him and just give it a nice shape. So I'm going to take my scissors and I'm going to start with one of the cheeks and I'm going to cut along the side of the head, just going to pull up the fibres and cut in the same direction following the shape of the head. I'm just cutting very small pieces off at a time because you can always cut more off but it's much more difficult to get the shape if you accidentally cut too much off. So just very small and careful snips and then I'm going to turn the scissors towards the nose and just trim it down. And do the same again for the other cheek. So following the shape of the head, pull up the fibres and very small snips.
and then turn towards the cheek and again small snips and now I'm going to do the top of the head so I'm just going to fluff up all the fibres and just trim them down and once you're happy with the head shape you can move on to trimming the body so just pull up all the fibres and very gently just trim them down like so and just continue doing this for the entire body And once you've finished trimming, that is your otter complete. So thank you so much for watching and I really hope you enjoyed the video. I hope this inspires you to create your own sea otter. And if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to ask. You can contact me on Facebook or Instagram or Etsy. I'm more than happy to help. And again, thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you guys in the next one.